Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Atlanta Music Project's The College Years Virtual Symposium for high school students thinking about studying music in college. Thank you for joining us. My name is Aisha Moody, and I am the co-founder and chief program officer of the Atlanta Music Project. I'll be your moderator for this panel, audition, uh, sorry, uh, the uh, violin masterclass. For those who are meeting us for the first time, the Atlanta Music Project was founded in 2010 with the mission to empower underserved youth to realize their possibilities through music. We serve 350 students here in Atlanta each year through our various after-school band, orchestra, and choir programs. We also run two youth orchestras, two youth choirs, provide private lessons, and run an annual summer music festival and school called the AMP Summer Series. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, the Atlanta Music Project has produced a lot of online content, including masterclasses, panel discussions, and podcasts. The content is all free and open to the public, and we invite you to access it through our website, atlantamusicproject.org, or through our YouTube channel. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Chestnut Family Foundation for their support of our College Years Virtual Symposium and all of our online content. This event is streaming live on our Atlanta Music Project Facebook page, so please feel free to share the live video on your Facebook timeline. Throughout the symposium, we will leave time, we will leave time for questions at the end of each panel, but if you have questions at any time, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A box and we'll do our best to address as many as we can. Now let's get on with the show and let's meet today's special guest, Miss Helen Kim. Uh, Helen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Aisha. Thanks for having me here today. We're so happy to have you. Um, I know you, but everyone here uh, doesn't. So I would like to do a, a, brief, um, a brief bio on you. Ms. Kim earned her bachelor and master's degree from the Juilliard School, where her teachers included Chow Lin Lin and Dorothy DeLay. While at Juilliard, she served as concertmaster of the Juilliard Orchestra and was the winner of the Juilliard Concerto Competition at both the pre-college and college levels. She is the recipient of more than 100 national and international awards. She won the prestigious Artists International Competition in New York and as a result, gave debut recitals at Carnegie Hall and the Aspen Summer Music Festival. A native of Canada, Ms. Kim has been engaged by many of Canada's leading orchestras. Ms. Kim has been profiled on national and international television and has appeared on CBS, uh, CBC, PBS, and CB, at CBS networks. Her performances have been aired on NPR and CBC radio networks. Ms. Kim has toured extensively throughout Canada and the United States. She's performed Bach's Double Violin Concerto with Hilary Hahn at the Amelia Island Chamber Music Festival. Ms. Kim currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia, where she serves as assistant and associate concertmaster for the Atlanta Symphony for three seasons. She is currently the assistant concertmaster of the Atlanta Opera Orchestra and recently joined the roster of the Atlanta Chamber Players. She is a professor of violin at Kennesaw State University, and today she is the guest clinician for the Atlanta Music Project Violin Masterclass, and we are thrilled to have her today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. We have some fantastic young violinists who are going to join you today for this college symposium. All, obviously, it's all about um, what to do if you want to study music in college, and we've tried to cover all the bases. Uh, yesterday, we had a great master class that taught uh, the ins and outs of preparing for your college audition. So yesterday, they got the tips, and today, we're going to show them, uh, uh, do a, a mock audition, basically, and show them what Perfect. it's like to sort of put those tips into action. So uh, we have four people, and I'm going to bring the first one on now. Her name is Katia, and uh, I, I forgot to mention is that we have three organizations being represented, we, uh, three El Sistema inspired organizations here wow. in the United States, and that's uh, really exciting. So um, one is the Atlanta Music Project, of course. Another is Play on Philly, and the last is uh, Boston String Academy. So um, Katia, uh, well, I'm going to let her tell you um, about herself. You can say hello and ask any questions you might ask the same way okay. you would in an audition, and I'm gonna get out the way and let the music begin. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Thanks. Hello, Kat Hello Katya, my name is Helen Kim. It's so nice to meet you. Um, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Um, what are you gonna play for me today? Okay. Hi, I'm going to be playing today for you 
Haydn's fourth violin concerto in G major. Great. And um, may I ask how long you've been working on this piece? I've been working on it for about two months now. Okay, great. So why don't we get started? Are you all tuned up? Uh, yes. I believe okay. I have a video for you to watch. I'm not entirely sure. Yes, I'm going to announce, to, sorry, this is Aisha again, announce okay. to our viewers yeah. that because we yeah. are in the midst of COVID-19 and technology mm -hmm. sometimes is not your friend, uh, we wanted them to make sure they had a good take. So all the performers today have pre-recorded their pieces and we're going to show a video and then we will live, um, work with them live um, for, for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so Great. with that said, we can, uh, we can roll the video. Great. And give us a few minutes to bring that up.
Hey, this is Aisha talking. So um, we're going to stop there and we're going to, um, Katya, you can come on back and we're going to give you a moment to work with her on um, what you've heard thus far. Great. Katya, first of all, really beautiful work. You have a wonderful teacher because you are so well set up. I love seeing your beautiful hand position and really good tone and really good resonance in your sound. Now, one thing I must mention if you're auditioning at a place is the number one thing that we listen to, well, there's many things, but rhythm is not negotiable. And there's a few places, it's really the only places you've had a little bit of difficulty. It wasn't your technical elements at all. It was just some of the rhythmic uh, issues. Uh, did you find you had some difficulty with that? Yes, about that. With the accompaniment, I had recently just mm -hmm. got it. So it was my first time playing with the piano. Oh, very good. So a little trick that I do is I like to practice after I've learned the um uh, my violin part pretty well. I like to practice from the piano part because it is indeed really tricky when you put it together. This piece is actually harder than most because of the meter that it's written in. I've often wished that it was written in a different um, meter because it's, it's so condensed and you did a really wonderful job with subdivision. So um, one thing I did notice and one technical thing that uh, besides the rhythm that you can clean up really quickly, I know that for, for the next performance you have of it, I would like you to look at your, the frog. Um, can you see me right now? Yes. And do you do you do you do cole with your teacher uh, where you use the wrist of the fingers? You could do a little bit more of that. It might be that when you're recording something, you get a little bit nervous and you get uh, you get into your comfort zone. Because I kind of noticed you use kind of one part of your bow, which was just the middle kind of. And I'm guilty of this too in performance. But I would love, like for instance, a very open. If you really start your frog. That's also going to give you a confident feeling when you start it. Do you mind starting the very opening? And really, when you prepare yourself, feel relaxed with the hand and start the full frog. Like that. Yeah, that was beautiful. And then from that, you can take a... So that way you can have that to launch off of. But that was really lovely. Can you just play the first two measures again? Then I'm going to go to another section. Very good. Beautiful. So that is, you communicate a different. So when you're doing an audition for the first time, that's the first time I get to meet you. The way you start is quite important. And another little tiny tip, if you're going to um, do a video audition again, raise your stand a little bit. So then your playing posture is going to be as, as good as it normally is. It felt like it might have been a little low for you. And so just have it, the nose level in your scroll should always, because your setup is beautiful. You have a wonderful, how long have you been playing for? Um, 11 years. Wow, but really great, really good basics. Um, now let's jump to the double stops. When we have those fists there, I want to talk about your left hand there. Are you pressing really hard on the fingerboard? Um, I try not to, but I have difficulty with my first finger. Okay. I was wondering if you could soften your, your fingertip, like make it feel kind of spongy, because you'll be surprised how little you have to press to have a sound. Can we try just making that one fifth? I just want to hear it once and seeing if we could soften just your hand, your finger pressure there. Which one? That one, that one, yeah. So, um, Katya, I'm wondering if you know where you put the D-sharp, where you put the hand for the D-sharp, I'm wondering if you can place your first fingers in, in relation to where you think, put your wrist where you think your third fingers need to be so you don't have to jump for that one. Very nice. Okay, and then when I, with the right hand, can we provide a little more resonance? Like... I want you to use a little bit more of the rest. Can I hear open strings only there? Good. And then let's aim for the third beat of the grouping of three. So we sing all the way through. So 
let's try bringing out the third note of each grouping. Yes, so that will keep it nice and even. There's little tricks you can do, because I know that the fifths are, like, they're my nemesis, absolutely. Your lower one was very good. This one, that was great. Um, and can Lassa keep playing? Can you play that section for me once? I didn't get to hear you play everything because you're very smart and you jumped to be with the piano because we got off a little bit. But I just want to hear that little bit right there at the end. Do you want me to start where the arpeggio start? Yes, please. Great, so it's the same kind of trick there. If you could bring out the third note of every triplet or the grouping. I don't have my score. So that way we have a more singing quality. Yada ba ba da ba ba. Yada da 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 da. da. Okay. Yeah, let's try that once. Great. So for me, every time I have a triplet figure, whenever I'm playing, it's really hard to make it sound even in singing. And I love, that's my favorite part of the first movement right there, has the circle of fists or the cycle of fists. It'd be great if you can really sing those yada da 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 ba ba. And that sounds really good. Um, so lastly, just to make sure that maybe summertime is a great time to catch up on basics. I know that here with my students, we've been doing a lot of cole. And it's just a, a way to keep yourself really flexible because even with the little string changes, sometimes I see you using the bigger muscle. Is that something that you're working on with your teacher too? Uh, yeah. You know, when you're changing string, you always use like the little tiny, tiny muscles if possible. Um, and I really want to commend your sound because it's very resonant and very musical playing. And the, the few things I would really focus on is getting the rhythmic getting really comfortable with the piano part. Do you have the piano part to practice off of now? I do now. It was just the second Okay. Time. Okay. Well, you did really well. So I'll look forward to hearing you playing this. Um, are you, what grade are you in now? I am going to be a junior. Okay. Wonderful. Well, you sound really wonderful. Do you have any questions for me? Um, just with the, with the double steps again, you said to try to direct my wrist. Yes, so when you start this, often we'll start the fifth and we're just really comfortable for the fifth, but we don't think about where we have to be for the D sharp. So I like to find your thumb. The thumb is the most important here that you're not squeezing and you keep it very soft and you try to get in, again, everything. There. You can see the space underneath the fingerboard when I'm pressing. I hardly press. The more I press, my thumb squeezes, and then I can't get the intonation of the D sharp. So it's more uh, thinking about your wrist positioning, but also involved with that is your thumb. But mainly is trying to keep the hand from getting too tight in that, and then assisting it with a really resonant uh, right hand. That's key. Um, I think intonation generally is pretty good though. So you, you basically have it just making sure you feel confident enough with your hand and keeping relaxed so that in performance, those old habits don't come back. Because for me, in performance, I get a little tighter, like I try to hang on to my violin a little bit more, and those bad habits kind of creep in for myself. So I have to practice, when I'm in the practice room, I try to imagine what I feel like when I'm performing, uh, because that's the most effective. Sometimes I like to tell my students that, imagine that you're in the warm up room for a concert, and you have like an hour and try to make the most out of that time. Cause that way, cause you, you're so busy with high school and your schedules, you wanna get really efficient with your practicing. So a passage like that, you wanna imagine, okay, I'm probably gonna be tense here. So let's see what I can work on to make sure I'm gonna be relaxed and kind of have that default setting. So having that set. Thank you. Yeah, nice to hear you. Wonderful Katya, thank you. Excellent work, Kellen. Great job, Katya. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to go right into uh, the next person.
And um, I just want to remind everyone in the audience, we have Miss Helen Kim with us here today. Um, she hails from Kennesaw State University, and she is our guest clinician. And we have four violinists from uh, various El Sistema inspired programs that are going to be performing uh, for us today. So Halel is up, and I'm going to let her, you know, say hello, and you guys can get started. Great. Yeah, but we can barely hear you, um, Halel. Bare, I'm not sure why. Can you can you move up a little bit so we can hear you a little bit better? You turn your audio up there. You'll try it again. Is this better? Slightly. You can go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Halel Pearson, and I'm a rising senior at Fayette County High School. I'll be playing Great. in G minor, Movement One by Friedrich Seitz. Okay, thank you. I'd love to hear it. My name is Halil Pearson, and I'll be performing Concerto Number Three in G Minor, Movement One by Friedrich Seitz. <laughs>
Wow, bravo. That was really wonderful, Hallel. That's beautiful. How long have you been working on that for? Almost two months. That's great. Um, you, you've obviously been doing some wrist work because your wrist looks just beautiful and your setup, I mean, my goodness, that's such a straight bow. Is that something that you've been working at? Yes. It's just lovely. It's exactly what I want to see when I'm doing an audition, when I look for basic setup. Um, just your shoulders look so relaxed and your neck is so, it's just a beautiful setup. Um, you're just beautifully set up. One thing when I'm listening to you now is that I think that we can get more different kind of temperament with your right hand, like different kinds of sounds. Um, in particular, like I loved your opening sound. I think it sounds really rich and romantic. When we get to the end of the first page, when you have the, uh, this part to me sounds like it could sound more menacing, like, um, or like kind of like if you ever watched the silent movie and there's like a character, it, to me, I think you could have a little more fun with it. What's nice about it is sites drop this down to a mezzo forte, so it's not so loud. So what I would love to try, if it's okay, is I want you to use a little less bow. Let's just experiment. And let's just try to get a little less, uh, maybe not as ringy. What kind of character do you think for that part, Hello, what, what, what were your thoughts there? Um, it sounds like a large person stomping almost. That's oh, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so kind of menacing, do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, then in that case, what I'd like you to try, because this is the fun part about playing the violin, I feel like it's like a paintbrush or bows. We can kind of choose, okay, I want to go for the heavy person. So I'm going to use flat hair. Do you do that with your teacher too? Where, yeah, so maybe even more then, if you're going to go. Let's bring up that character even more. I love it. Let's, can, can you try that part for me? Thank you. That's great. So one tiny thing I'm noticing is the note before the three note chord. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not, you're thinking ahead to the next thing. You don't quite finish that thought. Can you make that sound as menacing? So <laughs> play it once and pay attention to the note before the chord and make that really short, the same character. Okay. Can we play just the, like that one line? That'd be great. Yes. Yeah, that's it. So just keep that consistent. So remember the note before, pretty much with anything that you play, when you play solo Bach later, it's always the note before that precedes a chord, double stop or chord. We have to pay special attention. I always catch myself like speed weeding and kind of like, ah, that's going to be fine and think, oh, no, I had to get the chord. But then in the process, you kind of act, um, cancel out your good character that you built there. Then, so then the, the, the second thing I want to talk to you about is at measure 40, I'm wondering, so you see that's this dolce, and you're playing it so beautifully with the left hand, it's so even. I'm wondering if you could do even a lighter bow pressure, like a, a more floaty kind of, um, a very sweet kind of sound. It's very good, but I'm just one experiment. I know it's over the internet. I'm not sure we can get, I can hear as well, but let's try it. The left hand again was perfect. So let's see if we can get just a more airy kind of floaty bow. Let's try it. Great. So then there, then you can make the crescendo there. Now, um, the other thing that I was thinking of with your bow distribution, because you're able to use your wrist so well, and it seems like it's not hard for you, I think you can go ahead and distribute your bow even more. Like use all, use this part of your wrist even more right from the start. So, so let's back up from the previous. And go right to the frog and just glide, yeah. Good, and that crescendo, you could dig in more. 
and one little trick I have when I have groups of eight of 16th notes, I like to think five and three rather than groups of four, because that way you could think of this as like a pick up the that way you don't really have to work very hard if you da 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 ba da da da. Can you try that? So kind of lead into that. So you're fine, yep. Yeah. yeah, so you can practice that. That's something that I've adapted to a lot of my, like when we had groups of eight, it's just so tricky to play evenly that I tend to get neurotic when it's four and four, you have a whole bunch of them there. You have like, gosh, two, two lines of filled with that pattern. So you could always kind of experiment breaking it up mentally too, because for me, it helps me from rushing and all the things that happen on stage when I don't plan to do those things. So that's just something that I always try to keep in my back pocket when I'm stage, I'm feeling nervous. Okay, here we go, five and three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay, great, the chords were, the next arpeggios were great. And the last line. Um, Miss Helen? Oh yeah. Helen, sorry, we have about 30 seconds left, oh hello. Okay, oh God, <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. Oh, she, you, you really just sound lovely. I'm just loving to hear your playing. It's beautiful. I guess my thing next with you would be to just experiment with all the possibilities with your bow arm because I feel like your left hand is just doing a marvelous job. You have a great ear. And I think this summer, if you can just keep doing your bow exercises, then try to do some bow pressure exercises too. I'm sure you do that with your teacher because you look so beautifully set up, but it's where you apply some pressure. And release. do I'm because I, I can see that you're so well set up just talk to your teacher and say that maybe you want to do all the things to me that they're already telling you but it'd be a great time to explore that because you're ready to bring more characters into your uh, arsenal with your bow arm but you just sound fantastic so thank you for playing thank beautiful you. yeah thank you very much hello gorgeous wonderful job we're moving right along, taking it to Boston now Ooh, with Miss Annie. Very excited. So take it away. Annie, you can go ahead and um, introduce yourself and, and we'll get started. I'm Annie from Boston String Academy and I'll be playing the Brook first movement. And Great. Yeah. Beautiful playing, Annie. My goodness, how long have you been working on that for? 
Um, like a couple of months. Wow. You're a very strong player. Really beautiful setup. Good sound. Great sound of intonation. Um, I'm wondering, though, like when you start the brook, do you have an idea of what the sound you want or do you have a story kind of in your head? Um, I don't have a story, but I have like symbols and like kind of like, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a feeling. I don't really know how to explain it. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, when I studied with Miss Dorothy DeLay, she would always ask me to write a screenplay for every concerto. She wanted like a movie and she wanted to know what the air smelled like, what color it was, all that stuff. But I only mentioning this is because when you go on stage and you're feeling you're faced in an audition or something, you need to have something to think about because what you're playing is so beautiful. But I have a feeling that you could create even more of a story with your opening. Like it's just the first two lines I want to try again with you. Um, like your vibrato is so beautiful. Like what what kind of sound do you want for the first note? Cold, warm? I want it warm. Warm. Like, really, like, gradually. Into the string? Yeah. Okay. And how about the little notes when you have... How about those? What do you think about for those? Um, I focus on vibrato and, like, trying to, like, make it into one string of notes. Okay. Like, kind of vibrato how... between the fingers. <laughs> right. But how about the, the, the kind of character of the person or the, like, is it, like, happy, sad, um... Um, kind of sad, like mm, melancholy, a little Mel bit. melancholy. Good, yeah. What what I hear from your interpretation, I love it. It sounds like um, determined, but sad. It's a combination, and I I want to. I always ask my students to kind of build on their character because that's the most interesting thing of this concerto. This the two opening lines because everyone plays it different, and I love your rendition. But I'm trying to see if we can expand on what you have. Let's start it one more time. And do all the things you want to do. Show me everything you want in that first phrase. I love that. To me, that sounds even more convincing this time. How about these eighth notes? What do you think the character of the separate notes? What do you think? Um, it's like a driving force. Driving force. Can we, in that case, have more resistance with your bow speed? Like, can you move your bow slower? So more tension, build up more tension in the sound. Okay. Good. Now let's put in the retardando there, and but don't give up your um, great character. So when you do, so hold on to that tension, but slow it down. Great. Okay. Now the next entrance, how do you feel the character about the next line is? Because to me they're different. I feel like you play them differently. What I are you thinking? start like more, with more force. Yeah. Like, a little bit rounder. Like more, yes. more intense vibrato. Yeah, I love that. Now the one thing I noticed is your treatment of the dotted note. So that F, what character do you want for that note? Because it to me it didn't match everything else that you played. Mm, I'm not really sure. Not sure. Okay. Let's when you do get to, I want you to play this again. When you get to that F, I wanted to make that one sound more vibrant. It's always the forgotten note on this passage to me, but it's the most important note. Can we try that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that conviction. When you get after that, so now, now you convinced me with that F. When you hear 
be careful not to start the crescendo on the E flat. You start to crescendo, but just keep it. That way you can build up more because I felt you gave too much right away. Let's do the whole whole passage. That's awesome. One last thing about that passage. Think about your upbows. Make sure you're coordinating. I'm losing the contact of the upbows mm -hmm. in that scale. Mm -hmm. practice actually do you do patterns with your teacher there or rhythm yeah I bet you do so just when you do another thing I like to do is just do a little bit lean think about the, the shape of your wrist you have really great setup think about pronating your wrist in on the elbow so so again you're just gonna turn in a little bit That's good because then you'll have more control if you just think about. Okay, so you're on the E flat. Don't crescendo, but look at your angle. You don't even have to use that much bow if you catch the hair right because it's going to grab the string. Can you try that skill one more time from the D on? Great. Yeah. So. Um, also, it doesn't have to be too fast. I like what you're going for with the passion, but I think you can wait a little bit until the last. After the shift, I think you should let it go. Great. Okay. Um, what do you feel? Like, this is one of the hardest first pages of any major concerto. Like, every violinist I know, they're like, once this page is over, like, okay, thank goodness. What do you find the most difficult? Um, I find, like, producing sound. I like... I don't know, I don't want it to be too tense, but I don't want it to right. be not, not there. Right, well, you know, I thought your sound production was marvelous. Your, your chords and your octaves are really good. Um, I think your left hand's getting a little tight. That's the only thing I kind of, when I was looking at you, when you do those three note chords, do you pit these? Do you practice pizzicato? No. Do you mind doing pizzicato just so I can look at your hand shape? Because you will be surprised how little you have to press there. So pits it. Okay, so you need to do a little bit of intonation work there with pits, actually. It's really helpful because you can see really clearly um, what's ringing, what's not ringing in tune. Um, can you do that once slowly for me? I just want to watch your fingers one more time. Good. So when you get to this one, that one, if you can make sure that your third finger stays really solid, so you can have a place to jump from. So let's do that again. Yeah, try not to move it. I notice it's kind of jumping around. So that note, I believe that is kind of a pillar, a tent pole there, yeah. Great, so you're not moving your thumb, right there? Your th um. thumb? Okay, good. So just make sure that you keep that, that joint really strong. Um, so I would practice that just to have added security. Um, tell me about the septuplet. How do you think about that? The, do you, I mean, you played it really cleanly. Does that give you any stress or do you feel good about it? it gives me a lot of stress. Okay. So <laughs> I, I hope your, I hope your teacher doesn't mind. Um, what I'd like to think about honestly is I'd like to think about it as the, the passage starting on the B flat. 
to think about two triplets. So will you play that for me? <laughs> So does that seem easier? Yeah, da 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 da. Yeah, da 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 da. Let's try it yeah. again. Yeah. So what I like, what I like to do is I like to think about the G as like a grace note. I don't even think about that. So I kind of put an accent, and it makes me my hand loose because I can do six. I can't do seven somehow mentally. So if you think might be easier for you too. Um, I don't mean to distort the rhythm or anything, but it's kind of like a mental grouping thing where you can think, okay, I have a little pickup, then a sextuplet, then it's no problem. The same thing with the next one. That one doesn't seem very hard for you though, right? That one's better? Um, or is it I, the same kind of? About the same. Yeah, why don't you try that one as? Just try that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you want here is to make sure that your first finger is not pressing too hard. So almost harmonic. Very light, very light left hand. Good, and now stop, we'll do it with a practice like. So. Two groups of three. When you put down your G, are you covering your fifth? Like, no. so I do. So I do that so I don't have to move my finger over. So you might like to try that. So, um, so I have the covered when I start. Yeah. So it might take a little getting used to, but it's actually easier because you kind of, you have it hovering. You're not really, you're not clamped on, but it's just there. Then you don't have to move. You always want to find the, the most uh, convenient uh, ways to do that. But for me, those two groupings are really uh, stressful, but that's a really easy way to kind of fix that. Your octaves are awesome and your sound is awesome. I think you sound fantastic. And uh, so what grade are you in? You're rising junior, did you say? Yeah, I'm going to be 11th grade next year. Wow. Well, great. You sound awesome. And uh, happy practicing with this piece. Are you going to learn the whole thing this summer? I'm not sure. Oh, well, I think you should. It's such a pleasure to hear you, Annie. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you so much, Annie, for joining us. Um, as another, again, shout out to Play on Philly and Boston Strings Academy for joining us. Annie is from Boston String Academy, and um, you were phenomenal. And Miss. Miss Helen Kim, we are just loving all of the knowledge. We're stealing tips from you. I hope you know. Oh, gosh, it's such a pleasure. What talent. This is so fun. Yeah, we are stealing yep. tips. Thanks, Annie. And uh, we're going to the next person now, Mr. Donovan, and he's going to uh, introduce himself and get started. Okay, great. There you go, Donovan. Go ahead and um, introduce yourself now. Okay. Well, uh, hey, my name is uh, Donovan Fuller. Um, I'm 16 years old. I go to Carver College. I play the violin, of course. I've been playing for about 10 years. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Great. I can't wait to hear Chrysler. Let's do it. Oh. My name is Donovan Fuller, and I will be playing Sicilian Rigadoon by Fritz Chrysler. <laughs>
That was fantastic. Wow, that is an incredibly difficult piece. It's very understated virtuoso. Donovan, your left hand's so wonderful. It's so easy and it's so even. I'm, it's so impressive. I like your tempo choice, the rigodon, because I'm sure your teacher must have told you about this dance, right? How yeah. um, it was, it's an elegant dance. So it was lively, but it was always controlled. And that's the part that doesn't often get performed. So I love that you had that control because most everyone kind of starts and it's kind of a wild race to the end, but no, you have that. The part I thought I'm, I'm interested most is the Siciliano. What are your thoughts on this character? I mean, I, I see just beautiful um, musical playing, but what is your story? I, I feel like you have a story. Yeah. With this. Uh, so, yeah, what's your story? Yeah, for me, I just think of like back in the times of like early ages, like, and you know what? Yeah. Like, what, like they wore the dresses and the, the little yeah. pink. And they just yeah. like, you know, that's that's what I think of when I, when I play yeah. this. Yeah, that, that's cool. Um, but I think it's so interesting because people often say that Silent Night, that, you know, dum, ba, dum, ba, that carol that we all sing at Christmas, it's loosely based on this rhythm. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that is always so heartfelt. So dum, ba, dum, ba. I'm wondering, I want to hear this one more time. I want you to play it for me live. Um, I want to hear a little bit, not pain, but just, you know, it's understood. <laughs> What I'd love to hear is more resonance, if I, if I were to break it down technically, in your bow speed of... Uh, there's a sadness to the sound that I think that you could, or I'm ex I want to see what you'll come up with, but can you, can you take it, the tempo down maybe two notches and just see what characters we can get with this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> lovely i don't know how everyone else listening feels but to me that's even more gorgeous than the first time you played it just just taking a step back um to really emphasize that beautiful kind of again i can picture that elegant setting that you're painting one thing though is when you're doing uh to me the interesting part is the shift i'm wondering if you do slower shift like the character you're going for but I think if you milk the shift enjoy that uh, interval can you try that yeah 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 that's really gorgeous I'm wondering though you know I like your you're kind of experimenting with the rhythm so you get to play that like, you know, twice. So maybe one of the times you could just play it straight. Have you thought about doing just one, one time just some? Um... Can you try it once just absolutely, just no, no fooling around with the rhythm? Yeah. Yeah. So then with the upo, passage do you think you could think about the dots like dashes and keep the bow on the string for the straight version so more flat here just be lazy don't don't do anything just kind of hang out there can we try it once straight great um and i i said this to um uh, when we're working on groupings with one of the other students with the group of eight, when I was working on that with five and three, with groups of six, like we have there, you could break it up into three and three. It's really nice. I don't know if you can think about your bow that way. Three left. Is there, do you think of it that way or not really? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, okay, yeah. uh, because it'd be really cool, like, I think if you do one version where it's just you're going to play 
it absolutely straight. But in order to do that, maybe the last group of three, you need to pay special attention to where you place that. So. All right, can you play it once, once straight, one more time? Good. So I bet, you know, you can work on it with, in your own time, but think about having one straight, one kind of fancy. Um, and uh, the second half, to me, you played it in this more, it's more optimistic, don't you think? Yum, bum, ba -da -dee, yum, bum, ba. But again, with any sort of the shifts in this, uh, can you enjoy those a little bit? I felt it's kind of easy for you. Your left hand looks really like it doesn't, it's not even a problem. But if you could do a slower shift, I think it would just kind of pull our heartstrings there a little bit. Can you play the second half of this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, that's such a beautiful, expressive shifting. I just love hearing that, Donovan. It sounds really great. When you, uh, my favorite part of this whole opening is right after uh, second to last line. Um, I'm wondering if you would consider making that phrase longer, because I think you're doing a wonderful with the grouping, but. out that a even more i heard you do it i think you could do even more i think in performance it'd be so effective because you, you just it sounds beautiful do you mind backing up to um from there yeah yeah cool This one even more. So great, that was so beautiful. Oh. And then you go on for the next one. I think you could delay that grace note, stretch that out. But that was so beautiful. The first one. Let's let's do the second idea here. Yum bum. <laughs> And my last thing about how you end this, I'm wondering if this could be a little bit more like the end. And surprise. It doesn't have to be that dramatic, but it might be cool to experiment um, kind of having fun with the time there. I, you were doing something like that though, weren't you? Yeah. Kind of like it was getting kind of sad and you kind of bring it back up for that. Good, okay, that just, I don't want to mess with it anymore because it sounds so good. The reggaeton, I was wondering, you know, you didn't play the trills. The, the, um, are you leaving those up for now? Yeah, I'm still working on those. Okay. So it just, I, what brings me to the thought, there was a, a wonderful American cellist named Lynn Harrell. I don't know if, he, if you know who that was. Well, he passed away just so suddenly. He's a, if you can look at his YouTube videos, he played with Pearlman and just, he's a legend. And I, I got to work with him one summer and I have trouble with fast trills. And so he looked over at me when I was playing something and he said, do you know that you can drop your bow with a trill? Like, so he does this. So it's a little trick. Okay, your teacher is probably going to kill me because this probably, you need to save this for college, but um, if you drop the, if you add a little bounce to a trill, it's so much easier because if I'm here, nothing happens. 
So talk to your teacher about it. That's I just it brought the because he passed away uh, about a month ago, and it was it was kind of sudden in the music world. I thought about that my interaction with him, and it was such a brilliant suggestion because um, when we're doing trills, they, we often get tense, but we need a little just one but. So it's a tiny trick, and if you listen to like all the violinists and all the people that are performing, they do a little bit of the release of the bow stroke there to facilitate a fast trill. You don't have to do when it's a slow, you know, lyrical, like the end. That's no problem. But when it's in a fast passage like that, you might want to consider, uh, you could further down the line, that's a little trick that I didn't know until, gosh, uh, in my late, 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 late 20s. So <laughs> I figured I'd like to pass it down the pipeline sooner. Um, and, but I have to commend you on your, your fast, uh, the Reganon, because your control is so great and your left hand strength is just wonderful. So I wish you a wonderful summer of learning, but you're you doing so marvelously. And I hope to get to hear you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Donovan. Wow, this was an incredible session. Thank you so much, Helen for sharing Thank your you. wisdom and expertise with us. Uh, uh oh, get my video going here. Oh. <laughs> um, for, for those of you that uh, may have joined us a little bit later on, we are the Atlanta Music Project. And today, this is our uh, final session for our virtual college symposium called The College Years. Uh, and it was designed to give our young musicians, as well as other young musicians around the country, a sense of what they need to work on when thinking about um, going to school to study music. And uh, we, it, it culminated with this violin masterclass with the amazing Helen Kim. So much information in just 60 minutes. We really appreciate you uh, being here today. Thank you for sharing with us. And I know that uh, Miss Jessica's not going to kill you for sharing your little uh, tricks of the trade. <laughs> and uh, they're all watching and everyone's taking notes. It was it was really good. A uh, special shout out to Katia, Halel, uh, Annie, and Donovan for joining us today in, in the midst of it being the end of the school year and yeah. online learning and all the other crazy things going on in your world. You, you took the time to prepare for this master class and uh, we really appreciate you giving it that push because um, you all are amazing and we don't want anything to stop your learning. So we're glad that you were able to join us. And again, a special thanks to our friends at Boston Strings Academy and Play on Philly for sharing your wonderful young people with us. This was amazing, we must do it again. And we have yeah. lots of amazing comments in the comment section and the chat section. Thank you guys for the um, the well wishes and the kudos. You're an amazing audience. Uh, thank you again, Miss Helen. I hope you have a wonderful nice summer. And everybody thank have you. a great summer and see you next time. Great. Thank you, thank you everyone.